Segment three, Golden Black Live. Kyle Charters comes back out of the bullpen. Joe Tiller wanted to leave, but we wouldn't <laughs> let him. He said he kept saying, but Brian, he said, Brian, you have to go, or do I have to go? And it was Brian that had to go. He's going to cover a little bit of basketball before uh, the end of the day. Coach, uh, we were talking off air, some of those great moments. And 1997, as you said, every week was like Christmas, and it was. It was for all of, all of us that were watching uh, there was nothing, nothing hotter than new love, as they say, and that was every week in that that season. That's another segment. Is that a quote you've heard, ever heard before? No. Okay. All right. I, <laughs> that's an inside joke. Kyle and I have been trading. I've been using phrases that Kyle at his. Kyle's not that much younger than I am, but he apparently they, we don't relate well. <laughs> anyway, 1997, you won a lot of football games. You didn't lose very many, and nobody thought you would. Michigan State, you beat Michigan State, still one of the greatest games. Was that the greatest game you ever really coached in, if you think about it, in terms of, in terms of a surprising finish, the 22-21 to 21 win? That one in Minnesota was pretty Yeah, that was pretty good, too. You yeah. know, but, uh, uh, you know, that game, the thing that I remember most about the game, besides the fact that uh, uh, you heard the double thump, you know, yeah. the kick, the boom, boom, the yeah, block I, of it. I love that term. Uh, and... Uh, and Roosevelt Colvin picking it up and the way we went or whatever. But, uh, no, what I remember about that game, besides the fact it was a great finish and we won it, which was unbelievable because I think we were down by 11. Mm -hmm. So even a field goal and a, and a touchdown wouldn't have, wouldn't have done it. But the, the stadium was emptying out. And, uh, yeah, did you leave? I, I left. Came back into the south. Came well, back in, I was a student. Came back I into said, the south you know, end zone. It was like the parting of the sea. Boom! They were gone. Oh, they <laughs> came back. You know, but uh, you just don't see that. No. Well, you just don't see it. Period. But uh, uh, amazingly enough, besides the game, I remember the crowd the yeah. most. It was, it was. Uh, it was a lot. That was a lot of fun. The whole year was a lot of fun. I think that game is still cited. Every time a team does not kick the field goal when they're up by ten or so with with four minutes to go, at least around here, we all say, "Well, remember what happened." And remember who did it? Nick Saban did it. Yeah, Nick Saban. What a bummer! Almost was. this fall repeated it. Really? I well, know. yeah, right there at the end of the season and the uh, championship uh, game when he lost it. And he, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Went for the field goal. Yeah. You know, and the guy returned it, you know, for a touchdown. Yeah. So for Auburn in that situation, yeah. that's, that's the absolutely Alabama correct. Alabama Auburn game, right? In that game, um, you had and one of the things about the '97 season that was amazing is you did pull guys that you know weren't used to that had some talent, like Billy Dickin. Uh, uh, you made some key position changes. You know, Mike Rose, who was, I know, a pain in your side from time to time, but was a pretty <laughs> good football player. But you had guys who were able to put the pieces of the puzzle together. Uh, looking back at it, uh, does that uh, surprise you? that, that well, It wasn't easy to do that, but you had to sell some guys on, on being in different mm -hmm. spots. Yeah, we did. And, and Mike Rose was not a pain in my side. It was a little bit further down. <laughs> okay. back you, you caught where me. he was a pain. Yeah, he was. Um, he still is. He's still, still the same guy. Same yeah. guy. Yeah, yeah. I love him though. He's funny. Uh, anyway, uh, uh, you know, we moved a bunch of guys around. You know, I'll never forget the Matt Light move. Yeah. You know, uh, we came in and and we were in spring ball, and Matt was a tight end, and we wanted him to move to an offensive tackle position and put weight on over the summer. And so we struck a deal. He said, you know, I'll go through spring ball, and after spring ball, I'll, I'll make my decision. And I never told a player, hey, you know, you know, line up all you quarterbacks, line up there, and take one step forward. <laughs> Not so fast, Billy Durant. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. So anyway, um, uh, you know, I always would – would say, hey, this is where we think your future lies, and here's why we think your future lies there. And then you make the decision. Because if they make the decision, they're happy campers. And more importantly, their mothers are happy. <laughs> so, That's a big part of it. You know, so anyway, uh, uh, we go through spring, and, and Matt, at the end of spring, I, you know, I always, always had my one-on-ones with them you know, every year. Yeah. And... Uh, and I said, well, Matt, what do you think? And he said, uh, I think I'm going to stay at tight end. <laughs> so, 
<laughs> so he goes into the summer thinking he's going to be a tight end, you know, and then uh, we start fall camp and, uh, you know, all you tight ends take one step forward. Matt, not so fast, but we didn't do that. But, you know, he's a smart guy. Yeah. And, uh, you know, he saw that, uh, you know, his limitations at tight end versus at tackle were were significantly different and made the move. But a lot of guys, you know, that first year, you know, uh, 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 Brian Nicely, yeah. you know, was the starting center the year before. And now he's a starting left guard uh, because uh, Jimmy Niedrak now yeah. becomes a starting center. Um, Mark Fisher was a starting left guard, and now he's a starting left tackle. Uh, you know, you, you, you can go through that uh, with a number of guys. Uh, you, you maybe yeah. were going to cite somebody else. Well, no, I was going to say, Mark, in, in, in that line, which really was somewhat maligned or a huge question mark coming in, you know, Mark Fisher was a pretty salty college football uh, left tackle as well. He was very good. He was very good. Uh, the thing I remember most about Mark besides his competitiveness was uh, one day we were out there and uh, I was talking to him about mental toughness and getting tough and and you guys need to step it up, et cetera. And so we go through a hot, really a, a really a hot August yeah. afternoon, and we got the and we always finished it with a kicking segment, and so we're we're lining up and we're going to practice field goal kicks right before uh, we're going to do an all up and come in. I'm saying you guys are not disciplined enough, you know. You, you, you can't just hang in there and do what you need to do. Mm -hmm. You need to get tougher in this area. So Fish is down, left tackle, he's got his hand on the ground, and we're kicking a field goal, and he gets really sick because, of course, he took in a lot of water before that break. <laughs> And the next thing I know is he's up chucking <laughs> on his hand, but he's not moving his hand. <laughs> yeah. And his stuff's dripping off of his face mask. And I said, all right, fish, you're, you're learning how to become disciplined and sitting in there, you know, but I don't want to shake your hand. <laughs> anyway. Fair enough. All right. Drew Brees, I'll, I'll let you ask a question. You're not just sitting over there. Do you, you have anything you would like to ask? <laughs> I was just going to let him keep no, going. All right. No, your, your, your you, stories are You really great, took right. it to Nick Saban there three years in a row. I guess. You know, I can't really say because uh, uh, this is a family show. Uh, <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> what my nephew said about that. But, uh, um, you know, we were fortunate against, uh, against Michigan State. They helped us out. You know, block kick. Well, two Todd, games Todd Stelma, who blocks yep. that punt. Yep. And, up there and you were down 11 there. in that game in the fourth quarter. Yep. So. Yep. so anyway, you know, uh, we were, was, uh, oh, yeah, Drew was a quarterback. <laughs> I remember the other game up there at Michigan State. I think it was Michigan State, where um, uh, we had John Staniford as a wide receiver. And, uh, yeah, and, uh, 2002. We, and we had uh, – uh, Kirsch is our quarterback, yeah. and uh, we actually sat Orton down, and uh, and started Kirsch, and he played pretty well yeah. in that game. And anyway, we come down; it's right at the end of the game, you know. It's a, like the last possession of the game, I think, and uh, uh, we we we're, we're moving the ball, and we're we're and all we needed was a field goal, yeah. I think, to tie it to put it in overtime. Uh, and, you know, you always play for the best scenario you want to score, but, you know, let's just get us to overtime. We can fight another fight, you know. And uh, so we're, we're driving the ball. We're doing a nice job. And now we come up, and it's, it's uh, fourth and two. So we call, uh, you know, one of those – it was kind of a rub route, you know. Yeah. It was uh, <laughs> not a pick. Design. It wasn't no. a pick. <laughs> no, no, not a never pick. was that. Okay, okay it was okay. designed it was to get the <laughs> the crossing guy underneath free, and he was going to be there because they were dropping off into that wonderful prevent coverage yeah. that we all love, and uh, and and damn if Kirsch doesn't get the wind knocked out of it, <laughs> and you know it was so the uh, trainers go out there. And, and well, you, you got to come off a play. If the trainer goes on the field, you got to come off a play. So now I said, Kyle, hurry, hurry up, warm up. You know, you got to go in there. Okay, we just need this first down. We're going to hit the <laughs> under route and uh, pick up the first down and we'll move on. We go out there, 
Orton looks things over and he audibles to a 93, which is a go route on the outside. It, you know, a 40 yard pass. And I'm, I'm saying, oh, I don't want to say what I was saying. <laughs> but, uh, but I'm just think, I'm saying, no. I'm yelling, no, no, no. Uh, out to him on the field and he's going through the, his audibles and the ball is snapped. And I said, oh, God. <laughs> And he arcs this ball down there, and Stanford catches it. And I said, yes, yes, <laughs> yes, all the way. So anyway, we had some memorable games with Michigan State. So and my guess is that in the press conference, so we can go back and listen to the tape, you just said that that's exactly how you drew it up. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> that was, I was honest that yeah. time. I didn't draw that. That was amazing because you think about that game, it was about 30 degrees, it's freezing cold, and, he, and, and Orton comes off the bench, and, and the rest is history, so to speak. In 99, you scored, what, 52 against fifth-ranked? Michigan State, and Drew Brees threw two pick sixes in that game. Yeah, Did you ever get mad at him? Were you really mad at him? You know, I was only mad at him really one time, and that's when he was a sophomore, and we were playing uh, Notre Dame up there at their place. And oh, we yeah. had that damn game won. And, uh, uh, you know, he threw the ball. Right over the middle, right? <laughs> like, crossed his body. He's going to the right. He throws to the left. Tony the ball's going to rise. <laughs> You know, and, uh, you know, it's just a ill, you know, he believed one, one great attribute that Drew had while he was at Purdue and still has today, and that is he believes he can make every throw. And if you don't believe that, then you can't make every throw. So he thought even though 16 guys were covering our crossing route, <laughs> he was going to throw it in there anyway. <laughs> On the move, across his body, back in the middle. And when he came out, I wasn't happy with him, and I let him know that. And uh, I don't think he ever did that again for yeah. while he was here. So, but uh, uh, it is hard to get mad at Drew Brees. He loved the game so much, and and uh, he loved, loved every Sunday and Thursday, we'd work the two-minute game, and he just lived for those practices. <laughs> I never saw a guy couldn't wait for practice. It's two minutes, two-minute drill today, you know, and he just loved the. The finish of the game and you know that final drive. He was so uh, tuned in and so focused compared to the other players. The other players, we're on a practice field, you know. <laughs> and, and Drew's like, "Come on, let's go," you know. Now we got to convert here, you know. And uh, so anyway, he was uh, he was a delight to coach. And I told the uh, I told our coaches, I said, you know, you got to enjoy this guy because in your coaching career, one of these guys comes by maybe once a decade, but probably more like once every 15 years. And uh, I was at Indiana State last week and watched them play, and they've got a heck of a quarterback now. And so I told the Indiana State coaches, I said, you guys need to enjoy this guy because you only see one <laughs> yeah, once, yeah. A, once a decade. I asked Al this a couple weeks ago, but could you tell with Drew when he was redshirting that, I mean, not only that he was good, but that there was – so well, he never really didn't redshirt. I mean, his freshman, oh, excuse, year. Yeah, yeah. 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 his freshman year when he played just a little. Well, we knew, you know, that he was going to be a great player to the extent that uh, uh, we went out and uh, recruited our junior college quarterback. <laughs> David Edgerton. Yeah, yeah, we got Edge in. And, and he was a great team guy. Yeah. I mean, you know, he had offers from other places, and he wanted to come here because we were so convinced that this sophomore uh, <laughs> yeah. couldn't do it. We wanted a guy with more experience, so we went and got a guy with more experience. But he made a throw in uh, that opening game, the SC yeah. game. The Coliseum, yeah. And, um, you know, it was late in the game, and it was down in the goal line. And, uh, you know, he held the ball, and he looked one guy off, and he came back. He scrambled up forward and pulled up and threw the ball on the move, uh, you know, but put it right on the money and uh, Stratton probably caught it for a touchdown. And I can remember saying on the headset, fellas, I think we got ourselves a quarterback. Yeah. And uh, the rest is history. Yeah, he he was uh, he was pretty good. You look back at the at uh, you've had some characters that, uh, you know, the Tim Strattons of the world. We'll talk <laughs> about Mike Rose, but others that uh, when you when you see him now, uh, you know that the helmet incident in two thousand. You when he lost his helmet after the Michigan game and almost missed the Northwestern game. You forgive and forget those kind of things, or do you, do you laugh about these these guys? Or are they still a little bit sheepish about coming up to you, 
if they've ever crossed you at one point in time? Um, I think with the passage of time, it heals all. <laughs> yeah, good. Um, That's still a great story, though. Yeah, <laughs> and, uh, you know, sometimes, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, well, I'll just leave it. <laughs> yeah, you'll sometimes there. you still want to smack them, but, but you don't. And, uh, you know, they grow as yeah, people. And, and, he, uh, and he's grown Mature up. and the like. And, uh, you know, but I've always believed that down deep, a person never really changes <laughs> at all. If he's uh, if he's a loose cannon early, he's a loose cannon late. But but uh, it may be more discreet. Yeah, I can only imagine if you would have had Twitter back then. Oh, like dealing Lord. with that with, with what some position of those. did he play? <laughs> yeah, he's <laughs> left. Played all of them. Yeah, we still <laughs> owe you uh, whatever money we still have left with you, which isn't much. But Knucklehead Central is still named. Our, our premium message board is named after what you called people on the internet, knuckleheads. <laughs> and you know, the internet stayed around though. But you never said it was going to go away. That was the good thing. You knew it was here to stay. You just didn't necessarily like it. And 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 believe us, from in that environment, there's not there's a lot of things we don't like about it either. <laughs> yeah. so, so from that standpoint, I I ran into just to interrupt. Yeah, I ran into a guy at the Indianapolis airport this summer, in June, when we're flying. Yeah. Comes up and, Coach Joe, I always want to meet you. I'm so-and-so. Uh, I'm a knucklehead, uh, <laughs> <laughs> whatever. I said, well, you know, I don't know if you guys have certain handles or whatever, but uh, it's nice to meet you. And it's, I'm really pleased to know that you're part of the knucklehead crew. And they're there still go. they're still around and still going, going well. Going strong. Yeah, still going strong. Well, we this conversation is going to continue at uh, Craner Auditorium this afternoon. We got to go get him. He's cleaned up now, but he's really going to get cleaned up in the next hour or so. <laughs> Two sessions, 4:30 at the, be the first one at uh, Craner. Just kind of an informal chat with the coach. It's called a night with Joe Tiller. That's worth millions of dollars on its own right. And then 5:30, <laughs> the coach. You know what, be Alan? You should have been my agent. <laughs> I know. You're not getting anything. This is a charitable thing today. Jim Brugink talked you into this, and we're glad that you're doing it. But that'll be at Craner. If you get a chance to stop by, uh, the coach will be glad to see you, and, and uh, we'll look forward to that as well. And then you'll be in Ross Age Stadium for maybe another big upset victory over Michigan State. I know you're not guaranteeing that today. but it's, No, uh, but last weekend was good because, uh, you know, uh, Illinois State won, Purdue won, yeah. uh, the Saints won. And the Bills won. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Sunday afternoon after the last game, <laughs> as we were watching it on uh, uh, Red Zone or whatever that is, <laughs> yeah. so we got yeah. split cameras. We got uh, New Orleans with a Purdue quarterback here. We got Buffalo with a Purdue quarterback here. They both throw balls and get caught. They both win, win their respective games. And uh, I said, you know, I'm really glad I'm me. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good that's a good way to look at it. All right, we want to thank everybody that, that was involved in the show, mainly this guy and Kyle Charters, obviously as well. Gordon Jackson, and Kim Caldwell back and Allie back in the in, in the back rooms of WLFI for putting this production on. Triple X for bringing us root beer. Do you want a root beer for the trip home? Absolutely. Okay, we'll take care of that for you. Uh, Kerry Ayersman and Greg Ayersman donated those, and we'll we'll do a live remote uh, from their shop here in two or three weeks. We will see you next week uh, prior to the Purdue-Minnesota game, Golden Black Live at 2 o'clock. Have a great week, everybody, and we'll look forward to seeing you next week on Golden Black Live.